What's up guys, my name is Tyler and today I have a gameplay for you on COD4, it's Domination on Bog, and um, this is the perfect gameplay um, for what I am hoping to discuss today. Um, I'm going to talk about how to win Domination in the way that I found that um, this is the strategy I use when I play Domination and I tend to find myself winning games much more frequently when I use this kind of strategy. So let's just get right into it. Um, actually, hold on, before I get into it, um, when I play the game in here, I do, um, I play by the strategies that I'm about to, I'm about to, um, discuss, I suppose. But, um, so there are many people that go into the domination games with intent of, of winning a game, but it seems everybody on their team is just a kill whore, so to speak. And it gets frustrating, it really does, because there are people out there whose goal when they play is just to win the game and they don't care about the KD ratio, and that's completely understandable. But having a couple kill whores on a team isn't quite such a bad thing as long as the team is balanced with players who also play the objective and they have kind of a, a strategy and a foundation on how they can really use the kill whores and the objective players together to, you know, make an overall great team, good winning experience, I mean good gameplay experience and you're gonna find yourself winning games much more frequently and how do you do that? My recommended strategy for winning domination is having, oh, this is assuming you're in a group of six, is having two kill whores and four objective players and if you're wondering why is that and that's because as much as you hate the kill whores they do provide much help for the objective players. If there were no, yeah sorry, if there were no kill whores in the team, then you would have all people going in for the objective with nobody defending them while they're trying to capture the flags and whatnot. Sure, you're on the flag, you can defend yourselves in many ways, but with a designated killer, uh, kill whore, sorry, you will have coverage almost all the time all around you. And you'll find yourself, while you're trying to capture the flags, only have to worry about maybe one or two people coming in towards you as opposed to maybe the whole enemy team and a bunch of frag grenades being thrown and stuff like that. Um, so assuming that the kill whore is good at, you know, kill whoring, which is why you should have a person who really has good gun skill, really has a lot, really good knowledge of the map itself, being the kill whore, that way they can actually be more efficient with some, in some maps that you play, the kill whore may change and stuff, but if you really have a solid foundation of players that know all the maps, they all have good gun skill, then you should be able to find yourself in a very, very good team that you can win games very efficiently. And um, the objective players just need to capture flags, and after they cap them, just make sure that the flags are defended. You don't, not so much by camping, but just like patrolling an area near the flag. When you see, and when you see the icon flashing, or you see the, uh, or you hear the, um, the commentator in the game say that you're losing B or you're losing A, you would go, and then you would go and defend it. But you don't necessarily have to be camping, but you know, kind of patrolling an area near, which. I do do in this gameplay, so that's a really good example. But, um... Or just throw a grenade and whatnot. And, and, all, and you definitely, a very big, big important thing is that you don't want to 3-cap. Which just means that you don't want to have all three flags captured at the same time, because... For a couple of reasons, that is. One reason is because once you have two flags, you don't want to run into their spawn and try to capture their flag because the spawns will flip, allowing the other allowing the other team to spawn around the other two flags that you have captured. Let's say you have A and B, and they have C. So when you rush into C, all of a sudden the, the spawns are going to get flipped because they were spawning in C, and then they're going to start spawning a little more towards A or in the middle of A and B, and have, some of them are going to ca go capture B, some of them are going to go capture A. And then there's going to be like a little switcheroo on the spawns. You're going to be start. You are going to find yourself spawning at C. So if you die, you're going to be even further away from the flags that they're trying to capture. So there's really no point in three capping because two flags. And when they, if you have two flags, they have one flag. You're still going to win the game. It's just going to be a little longer. And the second reason is kind of paired with the same reason as the first reason. Um, when you're rushing to cap the third flag, when the spawn does get flipped, that will throw all the kill whores off, like those those two kill whores that you have. It's gonna throw them off. They're gonna know what we're, they're not gonna know where the enemies are spawning, and they're basically useless for the time being until you manage to get your your flag caps right back to normal. So this is gonna basically gonna be like a four on six then, because those two players won't know what they're doing yet. They're like they're likely to die by getting flanked or overrun. Two flags is enough. 
you can win the game with only two flags while racking up kills to boot. Even if you care about your KD ratio, it's always it's always fun. Even if you don't care about your KD at all, it's always fun to score some kills. Which leads me to my last point, which is what kill streaks the uh, kill horrors and the objective players should have. If you're going to be the objective player, then you're basically just a support player. You're you're going in for the win, and so your kill streaks are going to want to be UAV counter UAV EMP advance UAV recon drone and all those all those uh, kill streaks that really help solidify a good solid team. And um, I recommend this is not what we always have, but I really do recommend having um, at least two of the objective players have some sort of lock-on weapon, such as the Stinger missile, which I don't know what it's called in Modern Warfare 3, but the Stinger type thing, or the Javelin. So that way when the enemy team, um, if they manage to call in a kill streak, um, you'll be able to counter that right away by taking it out because nothing starts like a spark of momentum like a kill streak. So like someone can if they one person has been going rogue, no one seems to be able to find him and he keeps flanking your entire team, the chances are he's gonna have some sort of kill streak that can hurt you and maybe he calls in like a chopper gunner and all of a sudden all your guys get killed, then that allows the team that allows their team to start capturing flags and maybe do this strategy on you and all of a sudden you find yourself defenseless and something that you can do against them because their chopper gunner just kind of sparked this thing like this huge momentum swing for them and they now they're in now they're in control of the game and you're not so it's always good to have the upper hand on them so a way to keep the upper hand is just by having two of the objective players um, with a like I said with a weapon that can take out those kind of kill streaks and and the kill whores, they should be running kill streaks that, you know, just for, suit their name, the kill whore. So they should be using like an AC-130, a Reaper, Chopper Gunner, dogs, and thing, things like that. Um, and it's it's okay for them to also run UAV, because UAV is a good way to start the game off. Because if you get a UAV in the first, you know, 30 seconds, minute of a game, all of a sudden you know where they are, and then everyone starts getting UAV. And don't call it in right away, unless you don't have a UAV up already, kind of hold on to your UAV, wait to call it in until later. Now these are just strategies that I tend to run when I'm playing with a full team. Even when I'm not playing a full team, you can still kind of organize it. So if you only have like three or four groups of friends, or three or four friends, sorry, rather, odds are you're going to go into a game and there's going to be a bunch of kill whores. If you find yourself that you join a game and there are aren't kill whores, like you, you finally managed to join a game and people playing the objective, maybe you should take the initiative, maybe you should be the kill whore and stuff like that. And But if you join a game where everybody is the kill whore and if they are good at it then you just you just jump right in and you be the objective player and um, I do, we run these strategies when I play with my friends and um, I, I see myself winning almost every single domination game I play. So I hope that you guys can take these strategies and use them for your own. And um, hopefully you guys will see yourself winning more domination games. Just like me, I, I see myself winning a lot of domination games. Like I said before, but um, in this gameplay that I got, I actually just got it about, I'd say, 10-15 minutes ago. And it's a perfect example of how I captured two flags and then I patrolled around the B flag. Because the B flag on this map is like the big, it, it's hard to capture. So if I stayed near it, then I would almost 100% guarantee that my team had the B flag during the entire game which happens we have the B flag they never capture it once throughout the whole course of the game so for once my gameplay does actually fit with the commentary but um yeah so if you kind of just take into consideration everything that I said maybe um, try I know it's not easy for everyone to find six friends so maybe try to join games and try to talk to people. I know that's it's not as easy as it sounds to talk to people. They're just going to yell at you, call you a faggot or something. But just try. See if these strategies work for you, and if they do, let me know. And um, I'll be more than willing to play with you guys, because I can't find six people either. But. So that's this game, guys. Um, I, the game started out really, really well for me, and then it kind of slowly declined down into not so great as it started. But I'm going to leave you guys with two more fails because I just keep seeming to getting fails on montage clips. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.
UAV is airborne. 